Hello guys, and welcome to another Nintendo Switch Online Game Boy Showcase video. And today, they added three new games, and all of them are actually Game Boy launch titles, so this may be indirectly celebrating the 35th anniversary of the Game Boy that happened recently. And one of these games, Super Mario Land, is one that a lot of people have been wanting for quite a while, and I can't believe that they haven't added it like until now, because this really seems like this should have been here since launch, since Super Mario Land 2 was on here since launch. So it's kind of weird how it took this long for them to add the original Mario Land. But yeah, let's go ahead and check it out. This is a game that I always love to replay. It's really fun and really simple. I know, like, for mar modern Mario standards, like, it doesn't have that much going for it, but I still think it is pretty fun. And it is pretty unique compared to the most Mario games. I really like going back to replay this game. Because it's kind of fun to, like, speed through and, like, play multiple times. I also have a physical copy of this game, too. I actually have a physical copy of two of the games that were added this month. But yeah, that's the first level. But I still think this is a fun game to, like, play through, even nowadays. Like, Land 2 is definitely better, but this still has its charm. And I like all of the fan recreations of this game that have been made over the years. Like, I've played a couple of them on the channel. Like, New Super Mario Land is great. There's also one that's kind of in the style of Super Mario All-Stars that's pretty good. And I feel like Super Mario Land is also, like, very unique compared to most Mario games. Like, it takes place in Sarasa Land, and the enemies are also, like, a lot different. They're kind of like different takes on like regular Mario enemies. There's also a lot of new ones as well. And it's kind of funny to see people like kind of generalize Sarasa Land as a desert because it actually has like multiple different environments. You kind of have like the Easter Island style area. Yeah. We're at, like, the last level of World 1 here. But yeah, I wish... This game was referenced in more Mario games. It's a little disappointing that, like, a lot of the enemies and characters here were completely forgotten. Aside from Daisy, of course. Because this is the game that Daisy originated from. But I'd like to see Tatanga return in a new game. Like, actually give him, like, an interesting personality and make him into more of an interesting character. But yeah, here's the boss. Like I said, pretty simple game, but it still is fun to, to play through and kind of speed through every once in a while. But yeah, I think it, it's kind of fun how there's, like, a enemy disguised as Daisy at the end of each world. There's definitely some charm to this game. 
But yeah, let's move on to the next game. So the next game here is called Alleyway. It is kind of like a breakout style game. And Mario is actually in it. This is technically a Mario game. Like, it is listed on the Mario wiki and everything. But yeah, speaking of breakout style games, another game that I want to see added to NSO is Kirby Block Ball. Because I think that game is pretty fun. It's definitely a more interesting take on this formula. But this is pretty fun too. But yeah, definitely a pretty solid title. But yeah, it's cool that we kind of got the, like, all the launch lineup here. But we also had um, Tetris from the start as well. But let's move on to the next game here. So the final one in the North American library is Baseball. But yeah, as you can see here, it also has Mario characters. So this is also technically a Mario game. It's technically the first Mario baseball game by technicality. Actually, there might have been an there there might have been another one. I'm not sure if there was like one on the NES. But I think it's kind of funny how they kind of like insert Mario characters in these sports games. But I actually own two co well, I used to own two copies of this game. I gave one, like, I gave one of them to my friend, but I still do have, like, one physical copy of this. And I have a physical copy of Super Mario Land as well. So two of these games in this lineup, I actually have physically. But yeah, let's move on to the Japanese library, which actually has one exclusive game. So we're on the Japanese library here, and the exclusive game is The Frog for Whom the Bell Tolls, and this is actually the game that kind of led to Link's Awakening's development. This is pretty cool. Like, a lot of Link's Awakening's DNA comes from this game, which I think is pretty cool. And the main character from this game also appears in Link's Awakening, which is pretty cool. It also has, like, a very unique combat system as well. Like, it's somewhat of an action RPG. But yeah, like, the visual style and a lot of elements in this game are very reminiscent of what ended up being in Link's Awakening. It's unfortunate that this game hasn't been translated before. It's kind of stuck on the Japanese service. But it is still pretty cool that you can now access it like on the Switch and everything, even if you have like a North American or European account. But yeah, anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And make sure to check out my Discord server and Twitter if you want to. Goodbye.